ओके गाइस वेलकम टू दिस न्यू लेक्चर वे वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द डिज़ाइन ऑफ रीन फोर्स कॉन्क्रीट रिटेनिंग वॉल रिटेनिंग वॉल इज बेसिकली स्ट्रक्चरल मेंबर दैट इज़ यूज टू प्रोवाइड स्टेबिलिटी फॉर सॉइल और अदर मटेरियल्स एंड टू प्रिवेंट देम फ्रॉम अज्यूमिंग देयर नेचुरल स्लोप फॉर एग्जाम्पल इन दिस पिक्चर एज यू कैन सी दैट दिस इज द नेचुरल स्लोप and uh, you want to uh, bring it down here so in order to prevent this mass uh, to come uh, down uh, you have to provide some sort of arrangement and this arrangement is called retaining wall right the objectives uh, of this uh, class or this lecture or this video is to classify types of retaining walls to explain failure mechanism of retaining walls and analyze and design rc cantilever wall as i uh, uh, showed you already that retaining walls are structural members used to provide stability for soil or other materials and to prevent them from assuming their natural slope in this sense the retaining wall maintains unequal levels of earth on its two faces <coughs> as already discussed the retained material on the higher level exerts a force on the retaining wall that may cause its overturning or failure so the material Uh, which the wall is retaining is exerting force or pressure on this wall and uh, trying to destabilize this structure we have to consider certain factors that we will discuss later the retained material okay the retaining walls are used in bridges as uh, abutments in buildings as basement walls and in embankments right they are also used to retain liquids as in water tanks and sewage treatment tanks these are different types of retaining walls this is a a simple cantilever retaining wall uh, which is consisting of uh, a slab and uh, the vertical member right the foundation and the vertical member this slab is uh, divided into toe and heel portion and this is called arm or the stem uh, a cantilever retaining wall can be without a toe or it can be without a heel so these are three different uh, types of cantilever retaining walls based on its uh, structural configuration and uh, these are also cantilever retaining wall but these are configured on the basis of uh, the retained material for example uh, if the retained material is uh, this is called the uh, backfill and if there is a, a material uh, which is uh, above the level of the wall then this if it is a, a uniform it is called surcharge right similarly it can be inclined the backfill can be inclined and uh, there can also be uh, a concentrated load applied on the top of the wall so these are based on the uh, on the type of uh, material that it is retaining similarly there can be a gravity wall that resists uh, purely on the basis of uh, its uh, weight uh, the counterfort wall it is uh, a cantilever wall but uh, the lateral braces are provided uh, on the inner side of the wall and the buttress wall is also a cantilever of a wall but the braces to the stem or arm is provided on the exterior side right uh, the terms related to retaining walls are uh, these are different terms that are related for example the vertical element as i already explained is called arm or stem the horizontal slab is divided into toe and heel a key may or may not be provided the material that it is retaining is called the backfill and uh, the material that is above uh, the height of the wall is called surcharge uh, the deformed uh, shape of the vertical and horizontal members uh, due to these loads is also uh, mentioned right the forces on retaining wall there are two types of uh, forces acting on the wall the active force and the passive force right uh, the coefficients that are involved the active uh, coefficient and passive coefficients can be uh, found out by uh, rankine's theory or coulomb theory whichever suits you and we will discuss it later in the lecture uh, these are the uh, uh, quantities or the resultant of the uh passive forces the horizontal forces in passive way and this is the horizontal forces in active way right so the active force is acting uh, uh on the side of this surcharge or the backfill and the passive force is acting in the opposite direction these are some soil parameters that we will be considered for example the unit weight of different soils their uh, phi the coefficient of friction uh, uh sorry not the coefficient of friction this is the internal friction right and this is the coefficient of friction uh, between concrete and various soils 
so if uh, it is sand or gravel without fine then these are the values if it is sand or gravel with silt mixture you have to use these values if the soil is silty sand or sand and gravel with high clay content then you have to use these values medium or stiff clay and soft clay silt right now earth pressure for normal conditions of loading these are different uh, conditions for example if there is only backfill and there is no surcharge then uh, you can determine uh, the values by these equations if the surcharge is uh, in inclined with an angle then you have to use these values and if it is uh, uniformly uh, applied uh, it is the surcharge is applied uniformly then you have to use these values don't worry about these equations and formulas we will discuss later in the lecture in detail okay now retaining wall failure or rc retaining wall may fail in three different ways number one the individual structural part of the wall may not be strong enough to resist the acting forces right number two the wall as a whole may be bodily displaced by the earth pressure without breaking up internally and uh, it is divided into sliding of the wall and overturning of the wall right and number three the soil beneath the wall may fail so let's discuss them uh, individually in detail uh, the first one failure of individual parts of retaining wall the stem heel or toe of the retaining wall may fail in bending and shear such as when a word a uh, vertical cantilever wall is cracked by the earth pressure acting on it Say, uh, see it's a simple failure right the design of these components require the determination of the necessary dimensions the minimum thickness of each member and the reinforcement to resist the movements and shears right the usual load factors and strength reduction factors of the aci code may be applied and uh, these are the uh, load uh, factors that uh, you have to use uh, while uh, determining the forces on the wall uh, these are uh, the details of reinforcement as provided by aci 11.6.1 right so we have to consider all these factors the second failure is uh, uh, due to bodily displacement of the retaining wall so the retaining wall as a whole uh, if it uh, uh, slides or if it overturns so there could be uh, two phenomena the overturning for example this point o if we consider it uh, as a toe so uh, this pressure h a it will causing the wall to overturn but the weight of this uh, uh, backfill and the weight of the wall is acting uh, in the opposite direction and trying to stabilize the wall so there are two moments the overturning moment which is uh, uh, equal to h a which is this uh, horizontal pressure in active direction into its distance from this point o so h a into h by 3 is destabilizing moment and stabilizing or restoring moment is because of this w1 w2 and w3 right so w1 into x1 this w1 and its distance from o is x1 w2 and its distance from o is x2 and similarly w3 so uh, the uh, restoring moment is this one and the uh, destabilizing moment is this one so the factor of safety against overturning is this restoring moment divided by the destabilizing moment and the, it should be greater than or equal to 2 so in that way you will be safe the second problem is the sliding uh, it says that the this pressure may take this wall away uh, right uh, in a sliding manner so the horizontal component of all forces acting on a wall uh, tends to push the wall in a horizontal direction right so the retaining wall base must be wide enough to resist the sliding of the wall and it depends upon the friction between the wall and the soil so the coefficient of friction to be used is that of soil on concrete for coarser granular soils and the shear strength of cohesive soils so this is the equation where uh, f is equal to mu into r where mu is the uh, friction coefficient and r is the resultant right uh, if you can see this is r right the resultant of all the vertical forces w1 plus w2 plus w3 is equal to r so mu into r plus hp uh, if you remember the hp is the uh, horizontal force in the passive direction let me show you see this is your hp right so this is your uh, restoring uh, force 
and your destabilizing force is HAH. So if your F divided by HAH is greater than or equal to 1.5, then you are okay and the wall is safe against this sliding. The third one is failure of soil beneath the wall. If the pressure of the wall on the soil beneath exceeds the maximum allowable limits, the soil beneath the wall may fail. So you can see if the resultant is acting right in the middle of the wall, there is a uniform distribution. When it is going uh, towards the uh, middle, uh, middle third or the uh, first third, uh, you can see that the pressure intensity at uh, toe is increasing and at heel it is decreasing. And here at the heel the uh, intensity is zero and uh, it is uh, greater or maximum at the toe and when it moves away into first third just like here you can see that this portion is without any stress and this portion is becoming overstressed right so this will cause the failure of the soil beneath so these are different conditions when the resultant of vertical and horizontal loads lie in middle third so this is the best condition and we always want this condition right uh, this condition is also acceptable uh, but this condition it will cause the uh, soil beneath uh, to fail so this condition should be avoided in all the cases right q1 and q2 are uh, determined in all the cases uh, given that uh, l and a are known so it is good practice uh, i explained this to have it in middle third but the second case is also good but the third case should be avoided so this is the sliding of the wall this is overturning of the wall and this is the soil bearing see you can see that the soil uh, is filled at the toe uh, at the toe point uh, it is filled so the wall will fail in this manner and this is the shear failure of the wall it is global instability of this uh, of the soil and it will uh, be due to the shear failure of the soil now failures or damage to retaining wall in most cases occur due to one of the two reasons number one overloading of the soil under the wall and number two insufficient drainage of the backfill we discussed this overloading right what is this uh, uh, drainage drainage can be provided in various ways for example continuous drains can be provided uh, longitudinal drains can be provided and weep holes can be provided right just because uh, to remove the water that has been uh, uh, coming from the rain or due to any other uh, uh, reason so that water must be removed from this backfill material uh, we will uh, discuss about uh, various examples in this uh, uh, lecture so I will continue it in a next video so stay tuned Thank you.